In this video, I'll be explaining how one of these, a car tire, can help save you money on fuel and some shocking facts about the new breed of ultra low rolling resistance tires. We've all seen the news, the price of gas, petrol, petroleum, benzene, or whatever you call it in your region has skyrocketed. These high prices have left motorists really feeling the pinch, with gas prices where I live having over doubled in the past two years. Some quick maths highlight exactly how impactful that change has been. If, like me, you drive an inefficient vehicle like the Tire Reviews Porsche Cayenne, which averages around 18 mpg, if I'm careful, and I drive about 18,000 miles a year, my yearly gas bill has gone from around $3,000 to $5,300. That's like taking a $3,000 pay cut for no reason, something completely out of your control. This has understandably left motorists trying to save gas of which there are actually some good ways of doing so. Firstly, you can just use your car less, but in modern times and in a lot of places in the world, that's simply not an option. Secondly, and everyone can do this, you can read the road ahead a little bit better. If there's a red light in front of you, don't drive up to it and hit the brakes. Braking is turning kinetic energy, which you've used gas to make, turn into heat, so it's a waste of energy. Lift and coast. Also, you can reduce your average speed and you can just think a little bit more about what's going on with the throttle. But all of this is a little bit boring, so how can tires help you? Firstly, tire pressures. Car tires are pneumatic devices. That means they can't function without air. Every vehicle comes with a recommended tire pressure based on the wheel size and load factor of the vehicle. Keeping your tire pressures correct is not only free and easy, it actually pays you back as more pressure means lower rolling resistance and less gas used in all driving conditions. If your tires are underinflated, you are quite literally throwing money away for no good reason. This video's sponsor is Okanion with their new One Pro Inflator. As you know, I don't run many adverts in my videos because I refuse to advertise something that I don't actually like. But this little tire inflator has won me over for two reasons. Firstly, it's a Kickstarter and I do love supporting great ideas on Kickstarter. But more importantly and secondly, this thing is actually really awesome. No manual pumping anymore, which is a drag in hot conditions. No annoying cables from the old fashioned tire inflators having to go through the car to get to the other side of the car, which is a massive pain. We've all been there if you've used them. No having to put the cables away, no hard to reach gauge. The gauge on this is awesome. Just sweet lithium power, meaning over a year's standby and it can inflate a normal car tire from flat to 100% in three minutes, which is faster than my old plug-in ones and faster than my foot I've tested. The Kickstarter launches today, linked in the description below, so get in quick for early bird savings, which are up to 40%. Kickstarter have already marked this as a project we love, so it will get a lot of exposure. Get on board, this thing is really awesome. You can usually find your vehicle's recommended tire pressures on the door shut, but if you can't, it'll be in the handbook. And if you don't have that, there's plenty of websites online, so there's no excuse. Ideally, we should be checking our tire pressures every week when we wash the car. But as great as that sounds, I definitely don't wash my car every week. Try and at least do it once a month. If you're feeling adventurous with your tire pressures, you can also experiment going over the factory recommended pressure. However, however, this does come with drawbacks. The higher pressure might save you a little more money on gas, but it will reduce your comfort. And more importantly, if you go much over the factory recommended pressure, you'll start worrying the center of the tire faster. If you're going to try this, you must keep an eye on what the tire is doing and act accordingly. I only ever go a few PSI over recommended pressure. That max PSI on the sidewall doesn't mean the tire should be run at that pressure. The extra pressure will cost you some comfort, but it should also slightly sharpen up the car steering response, which is always welcome if you like to drive like I do. But what if you want to save even more energy? Well, the tire industry has created ultra low rolling resistance tires. The two biggest names are currently the Michelin e Premacy, which despite its name isn't just for EVs, and the Continental Eco Contact 6. And yes, they really do have a significantly lower rolling resistance than their normal brothers, which in this example is the Michelin Primacy 4 and the Continental Premium Contact 6. How much lower do I hear you ask? Well, suspiciously, there have been very few tests comparing this directly in the real world, but we do have one test from last year testing exactly this. There's good and there's bad news. The good news is that yes, ultra low rolling resistance tires have significantly lower rolling resistance than their regular versions, measured in this test to be 30% lower in the case of Michelin and 23% for the Continental. That is very impressive. And I know what you're thinking, 30% is a huge saving in gas, sign me up. 
Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. Nothing in tires is ever that simple. A car's energy use is governed by a lot of things. Air resistance, drivetrain losses, parasitic losses throughout the car systems, and of course, the car tires. On average, a car tire is responsible for around 20% of a vehicle's overall rolling resistance. So that 30% reduction we just found is actually 30% of 20%, 6%. A 6% saving on $5,300 doesn't sound too bad either, but that's bench measured in the EU rolling resistance label test. That's, that's on a machine. The same publication actually tested this in the real world by driving around in massive circles for hours and hours. And they found the difference in the best tire was only 3.5%, not 6%. The 3.5% difference means in my driving of 18,000 miles a year, my gas bill could be reduced by $185, which might cover the cost of two tires. Sold? Well, there's still more of a catch and it's a really big one. As you probably already know, there's no such thing as the perfect tire. A tire is a collection of target compromises, and there are, even with today's amazing technology, certain opposing design targets which can't be resolved. Where is one of those compromises, but probably not because of how you think? A low rolling resistance tire doesn't use a compound that wears more quickly. Instead, manufacturers lower the starting tread depth because less tread depth is less air being pumped through the tread pattern as it's rolling, and that leads to a lower rolling resistance. The biggest issue, the one that gets me really upset, the biggest opposing target of rolling resistance is wet grip. The glorious quality of a tire I've spent at least the last 10 years of my life consistently reminding you is the most important quality of your tire is now compromised for rolling resistance. How bad can it be? Surely premium manufacturers aren't putting their names on tires with much lower wet grip than we're used to. After all, Michelin and Continental, the two we're talking about here, are consistently two of the very best manufacturers at wet braking. Honestly, it's not a good look for the industry. The Continental Eco Contact 6 didn't perform too badly, but that doesn't quite have as low rolling resistance as the Michelin e Primacy. The e Primacy was nearly budget levels of grip and wet braking. In the test, the Michelin Primacy 4 stopped the vehicle in 31.3 meters, and the budget tire on test, 38.2 meters. Can you guess where the e Primacy was? 36.3 meters, five meters worse than the Primacy 4 and just 1.9 meters better than the budget tire. It's not just wet braking though. Both the ultra low rolling resistance tires did very badly in wet handling and that reduced starting tread depth means they were also both the worst tires in straight and curved aquaplaning. Oh, and ultra low rolling resistance tires are usually more expensive too, so you're literally getting less tire for your money. I do know why these tires exist. Vehicle manufacturers want to focus on low CO2 numbers or lower energy consumption for a better EV range, but it really does feel like a slap in the face after listening to tire manufacturers preach how important wet grip is. Wet grip is the most safety critical aspect of a car tire. Can this design trade-off be resolved? Companies like Michelin and Continental are literally spending hundreds of millions of dollars every year to answer this question, but today we are not there. There is hope compared to tires from even just 10 years ago. These ultra low rolling resistance tires are hugely impressive products, but the key rolling resistance wet grip target conflict is still a way off being resolved. Whether you should fit an ultra low rolling resistance tire, that's down to you. But I've spent my life trying to educate people to buy a tire with good grip in all conditions, especially in the wet. So for now, I'm struggling to recommend ultra low rolling resistance tires, maybe the next generation of products will be better. For now, keep your pressures topped up, try and drive a little bit slower, try and coast to a stop instead of braking, keep your car serviced, and I don't know, maybe buy a bike. Any questions, comments, please ask below, and as always, safe motoring.